See, God's pleasure in life is you learning how to sow in honor. That's his pleasure. That's what keeps him calm. That's what keeps him in excitement. When you learn to do well. There's a scripture, I think that's in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 that said, learn to do well. The father's fascination is in you learning how to sow. If you really think about it, all that the Lord invests in you is so that you'll rise up and learn how to sow. There's always going to be something that God wants you to recognize that I'm supposed to sow this. Even if it's an act of kindness, hospitality, nurturing. Saints, what do you think parenting is about? It's about sowing. The first thing when a woman has a child, a man has a child, the first chapter of you having that child is sowing. You got to sow pampers, if, 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 sow food. You got to sow wipes. You got to sow time. If you think about it, the child will wake you up during, your, during the times of sleep. The child will wake you up. You have to sow time. You have to sow patience. It's all about sowing. Everything is engrafted in sowing, and this is the pleasure of God. When you handle your sowing anointing correctly, God will never be angry at you. When you mishandle your sowing anointing, God will get ticked off with you. Because that means that you're lazy. You're not grateful for the calling that you've been given. When you handle the sowing anointing correctly, it is evidence that you are appreciative. You are respectful to God. Saints, we look at the story of Cain. Cain disrespects God's calling on his life. Even though we talk about Cain from a bad light, Cain was called by the Lord. Believe it or not. God called Cain and gave him an assignment to be the tiller of the ground, which means that God gave him a strong sowing anointing. Believe it or not, Cain was given a strong sowing anointing by God to sow very intensely and bountifully. And if you look at what Cain does with his life, he disrespects the calling and he sows small. If you think about what was really taking place with that degree of Cain sowing, he was spitting on God, telling God, you know, I know that you called me to do this, but I ain't using this for that. No. I, I know that you favored me to be this to you, but I'm not going to be that. Saints, did you know that the, the spirit of God could call you to be something to him? And you could spit on his face and say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be that to you. I, I know that you have called me to pursue you. I ain't pursuing you. You know, I know that you called me to be trained by you. I ain't being trained. I know that you called me to seek out what you needed, but I ain't going to seek out what you needed. From the beginning of time, that's been man's approach. Cain was called for a good part. Not bad. Cain was not called to be God's enemy. Cain chose to be God's enemy, but he had to reject the sowing anointing he was given by God. When you reject the sowing anointing that you're called to accomplish with the Lord, your heart, it, it accumulates deep-seated hatred for him. God has a stupendous experience with a person that chooses to embrace their sowing anointing. Stupendous. He has an amazing brilliance and pondering on what to celebrate them with during the course of their life. When a person wants to take care 
of their man of God, they step into the highest levels of purity. When someone wants to respect their man of God, they get delivered from porn. They get delivered from fornication. They get delivered from smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, inhaling, crack cocaine. They get set free from gambling. There is a grace that the body of Christ has not walked in. Because that grace is inside of having a love and adoration and appreciation for the one that is in a body sent to set you free from the powers of darkness. There is a dedication that you have to walk in towards them to receive everything that you're supposed to have in your body, in your health. Did you know that serving your man of God cleanses your blood from diseases? Serving your man of God delivers your body from bone disease and health defects and sicknesses and illnesses and pain and infirmities. When you serve your prophet of God, you are now a recipient of heaven's rewards, the prophet's rewards. You are now wearing the helmet of deliverance. People, they fail with their prophet and they fail with eternity. When Abraham was talking to the man that was burning in hell, Abraham told the man, the man, the rich man said, I'll go back and I'll warn my family. I'll tell them not to come down here. Abraham said, they have Moses. They have the prophet. The fact that Abraham is in eternity right there with God and Abraham tells him if they want to be delivered, if they want to escape hell, they will have a prophet sent to them. When you recognize that your prophet is delivering you from torment for all eternity, delivering your flesh from being burned and tortured, Happening forever. You falling down the bottomless pit. Do you know what that means? That you're going to be falling down lightning speed during the course of that time. Non-stop. You can't hold on to no bars, no gates, no parachute, no nothing. Falling down the bottomless pit. When you recognize that your prophet is there helping you and you receive the ministry towards them to sow into their life, to bless their life, to prosper their life. That is when all things come together for your good. All things work together for your good when you work good towards your profit. The mystery is that you're called according to God's purpose. You're called according to what he will and his will and his purpose is your profit. Elisha's, the will, the will and the purpose of God for Elisha was Elijah. The will and the purpose of God for Joshua was Moses. The will and the purpose of God for Elijah, for, for, for uh, Caleb, was Moses. The, the will and purpose for John, Jesus. The will and purpose for Ananias and Sapphira is Peter. When you start taking care of your man of God, you unlock the invisible account. God has made an invisible economy to minister to your riches minister to your wealth and cause men on earth to give unto your bosom so that you can receive the same treatment that you have given to your prophet. Whenever you treat your prophet in a way that's prestigious, delicate, praiseworthy, honorable, these are the same things that come to you by the divine schedule of God. Not one ounce, one drip of what you manifest in your deeds towards your prophet goes unrewarded. Now, saints, that could go for good or for bad. You do the prophet wrong. There are people that is assigned by, 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 by the law of sowing and reaping to do you wrong as well. And that's scary. 
You imagine you betray your prophet. There's people set up to betray you. Y'all both smoking weed together and they already got in their mind. We're going to rob this person. We're going we to do them dirty. We gonna, and, and their brain is filled with evil imaginations because you're reaping what you sow. It can happen for good or for bad. Some of you will be like, well, prophet, show me that in the Bible. Okay. There's 40 plus children. They're laughing at Elisha. They're sowing disrespect. They're sowing an attack against Elisha's life. They're attacking him. They're persecuting him. They're bringing him into a death situation. And so Elisha curses them. He sets in motion their harvest. When he cursed them, he set in motion their harvest because they was cursing him. Now, they were not blessing Elisha. They was cursing the prophet that was assigned to their life. Now, I want you to catch this. The reason why their manifestation was so strong in wickedness is because their manifestation was destined to be strong in wisdom and worship. But because they didn't pick that, they wasn't willing. Now they're all in, in another phase, another part that's dark, demonic, deadly. So they pick the path of the Broadway, which is destruction, instead of the straight and narrow path, which is to see Elisha and honor him, respect him. So there's two she bears that comes out and bites them up piece by piece until they're dead. Beats them up, bites them up until they die slow. How they dealt with their prophet is how even animals dealt with them. Imagine this, that animals responded to the children the way that they responded to Elisha. They had no mercy. The bears had no mercy. They had no respect. The bears did not respect him. They did not hold his position in honor. The bears did not hold their position in honor. They wanted to crush him, and so the bears crushed them. They felt good at his pain. The bears felt good at their pain. The scary thing about life, and saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. I have never had to curse anybody that has done me dirty. I haven't had to curse nobody. You know, that's not my focus. As a matter of fact, you know, I move on in life and, and, and fulfill my, my assignment, you know. I'm not the one that needs a soul deliverance from eternity. So whether somebody does what they does, at the end of the day, I'm going to be in my glory. I'm going to be in my throne. I'm going to be ruling and reigning forever. Not millions of years, thousands of years, forever. So I do things for people to deliver them from their eternal hell. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. There have been people, I know about people, that when they did me dirty, they got connected with people that did them dirty. Way more dirty than they ever thought they would did me. And the people cross them in ways that they never thought they would be crossed. They didn't understand the law of how they treated me was determining how people would treat them in the future. Saints, now I can tell you on a good end, there's people in my ministry right now that how they have treated me, there's people that's treating them. And you wonder why people buy your product. Why would they buy? Why would they connect with your business? Why would they cooperate with your entrepreneurship? Why would they help you out? Why would they be nice to you? They are responding to you the same way that you have responded to me. My soul as a prophet is a determining factor of people's behavior to you. Wow. Those that sow into me and treat me with respect receive people into their life that do them no harm. 
People that become your investor, they have a brain flow to give you money, a brain flow to protect you, a brain flow to open up an opportunity for you, a brain flow to be nice and kind to you all the time. That's why the prophet of God is so important because when the prophet comes into your life, you now have a chance to unlock the good experiences that you want to have. You need people in this life to make it to where you're going to go. You need people in order for you to get money. You can't be a multimillionaire without people in the equation. Because yes, God can rain down miracle money. Yes, God can give you supernatural money and make you a millionaire through supernatural means, of course. That's, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit could give you invisible and, and make visible silver and gold short for you. Yes, he can. And he does all the time. But he not always going to do that. And that's what I, that's, that's, that's how I want to bring this home. If God gives you $2.5 million right now, supernaturally, he's not going to keep doing that forever. He's going to have you deal with people. So that you can understand that it's because I obeyed how the spirit wanted me to behave and what the spirit wanted me to say and do and how the spirit wanted me to solve their problems. Now I see the reward of millions coming towards me. So, so God is not going to waive the process of you listening to his voice and seeing the rewards for sowing. So he's going to let you sow. Saints, what I love about sowing is this, that there's a period of time where you're sowing and the harvest creeps up on you unexpectedly. That's why you always got to be praising God and thanking God because the Lord is right there receiving every seed that you sow. You sow 500, God right there receiving the seed. You sow 100, God receiving the seed. You sow 2,000, 3,000, 7,000, God right there receiving the seed. He's looking at everything you sow. And he has already built up a chamber within himself to take your seed and multiply it while it's inside of your prophet. When you sow into your prophet's life, God has this miracle working circuit of power like a tornado. There is a harvest multiplying Seed multiplying, rather, seed multiplying tornado inside of your prophet. And this glory is really the father taking the seed, multiplying the seed, bringing it through the prophet to you. And inside of that multiplication of the seed are plans. That's what Jeremiah the prophet was talking about. I know the plans I have for you for good to give you a future and expect it in. They're not evil. But God is saying, I'm not going contrary to your comfort. I'm not going contrary to your pleasure. I'm not going contrary. When he said that they are not thoughts of evil, God is saying, I'm not going contrary to your dream to live big. I'm not going contrary to your dream to have health, to your dream to have money, your dream to have cars, houses, whatever you dream about, jewelry. I'm not going contrary to that. They are not evil. They are good. They are in alignment with the desires that I have put inside of you. I put inside you to like nice things because I'm going to give you a life of nice things. But you have to recognize the part that I called you to play towards me, which is bless me. Don't you want me to bless you? My blessing makes you rich and adds no sorrow. That means that I'm not bringing a sorrowful experience. You're not going to be grieved when you see my reflection my response to your sowing. So all the more you should have energy to sow. All the more you should have energy to give and give big and give happily and give joyously because I, I have never been given a bad rating. Nobody has given me a review that was bad. That my harvest towards their seed was disappointing. If you look at the reviews of Job, the reviews of Solomon, the reviews of David, the reviews of Elkanah, the reviews 
of the Queen of Sheba, the reviews of Abel, the reviews of Isaac, the reviews of Abram and Jacob. If you look at their reviews, none of their reviews had a summary of criticism. All of them sold and came out with their silver and gold. They had the power. Now, why does God give you money in the harvest? Because money is accessibility to anything on earth, including people. Money is accessibility to anything on earth. Did you know that people, musicians, do you know that they have people pay them a certain amount of money to meet them after shows? Did you know that comedians have a certain amount of money that if you sow it, you can meet them after a show and they'll talk with you and they'll let you shake hands with them, hug them, take a picture with them. Did you know that? Money is accessibility to anything on earth, anything. There's nothing that money can't give you access to on earth. I'm talking about on earth. And so that's why you sow money. Because imagine the, the language that you're giving to God when you sow money. I'm going to take the very thing that gives me access. And I'm going to trust your plan to bring that access to me at the appointed time. Hallelujah. Uh, do, 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 you see, do you see the power of that? I, I'm sowing what I know would give me access to anything on earth. I'm going to place it in your word because your word has promised me access. And saints, that's why God gives you access to all things. He said, if you seek me first and all my righteousness, all other things will be added unto you. Wow. Now remember, money gives you access to all things on earth. Here's Jesus saying, if you follow my righteousness towards my system, all other things will be added unto you. So all the stuff that you thought that you was giving away your access to it by sowing into me, I am going to return those things back unto you and give you full access to them. And I'm going to let you enjoy them. They're going to be coming from me. I'm going to be the one supplying all your needs. Now, saints, I want you to catch this. The powerful thing about needs is we often think about stuff being a certain measure. And we say that's going to be the need. And I just need this to be done. I don't need no abundance. I just need this to be done. But God has a degree of needs that he implants in you for jewelry, for cars, for houses. Saints. He'll even pit needs in you sexually. He'll pit needs in you concerning stuff that you think are excessive. And he'll pit those things in the bracket of needs. Saints, there was times where I needed millions of dollars to fulfill certain stuff in JHM. It was, it, it was in the bracket of the needs. And I used those millions to fulfill that vision. Meetings, decoration, equipment, uh, uh, what they call those things, uh, music equipment, instruments, venues. So, so, all those things was in the, the realm of needs, even though it was millions. Think about it. God will even have the needs bracket of multi-millions of dollars. And so you might think, well, I just need my bill to be paid. That's all. I just need my phone to be paid. I just need, I just need this, this, this transmission in my car. But you don't know that God will have five cars in the realm of needs for you. So when he says, I supply all your needs, you don't be understanding the extent of what he's talking about. He may have three cars, three houses, and he, he placed them in the realm of needs and says, she needs this. He needs this. 
Now, saints, a lot of people that grow up religiously, they use that scripture out of context. My God shall supply your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul was talking to sowers in his ministry. He was saying, because you recognize me and you saw me as soul and you took care of me and you blessed me and you fed me and you respected me. You didn't slander me. You didn't show attitude towards me. You didn't treat me like I was a fool. You didn't laugh at my infirmities. You didn't uh, persecute my ministry. You sold your money, your time, your moments, your bread, your provision, your comfort towards me. You gave me a pleasant time. He said, my my God shall supply all your needs. All the things that you dream about, that, that you crave, that you don't want to be deprived of. He was saying, now I'm releasing the Lord of the harvest to multiply those seeds sown. So saints, I say unto you tonight, my God, the great God Jehovah, shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus from this moment forth in Jesus' name.